Hello and welcome to Woodvale. Thank you for being with us for church today. No matter where you are joining us from, whether that's here on site or online, it's great to join together as we worship God. He deserves all of our praise. I'd like to invite you now to stand to your feet and join us in a time of worship. Well, good morning, church, and welcome to Woodville this morning. I trust you're ready to worship our Lord with us. Are you ready? Come on. We give you praise, Lord. Come on. And all I see is the battle. You see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll see through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you There's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is the cross, God, you see. You shine in the shadows and you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty oh, fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every Nothing can stand against. Come on, Almighty Fortress. Oh, the Almighty. Come on, He's going before you this morning, Sheriff. Nothing can stand against the power. Come on, He's shining. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power. So when I fight, I fight on my knees. Come on, with our hands, our hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Give him praise this morning, church. Good morning. Good morning.
morning. Good to see you all. So happy to be here today. This is Water Baptism Sunday, and I have my friend Eric with me today. Uh, Eric has been attending Woodville since 2017 when he, uh, he moved to Ottawa, and we are so excited to be water baptizing today as a symbol of our dying to our old self and choosing to follow Jesus, experiencing forgiveness of sin, and uh, stepping into that new life that we have in Jesus. What a powerful, powerful moment. And Eric uh, just, just so sees the value in this. And so uh, why do you want to be baptized? Why don't you just share with your church? And we're going to ch celebrate and cheer you on today, man. Um, good morning, church. Um, I want to be baptized today because um, Jesus Christ mandates us to be baptized. And I want a new life in Jesus Christ. So that's why I'm taking the next step in my spiritual life. Thank you. Amen, amen. Well, church, why don't we, uh, we're going to uh, just continue to sing and worship together, and uh, we're going to just halfway through the song as an expression of our worship, uh, water baptize Eric, and so be sure to cheer him on, celebrate with him. We're family, and let's show him our support. Bless you guys. Thanks so much. Come on, you can put your hands together, church. As I sit and fall, I lie me. And as I darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. Resurrection power Up to the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven And all my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life His grace rewrote my story, I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Oh, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony, oh, this is my testimony. Oh. If I'm not dead, you're not dead. Oh, greater things are still to come, oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not dead. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not dead. No, you're not, Lord. Oh, greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not dead. Oh, greater things are still to come. Oh, I testimony from death to life cause grace we wrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive oh, this is my testimony from death to life cause grace we wrote my story I'll testify 
by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, this is my testimony. Yeah. Oh, we will testify, Lord, of all that you've done, Lord. Come on, if you've got a testimony, can you just give him praise for that this morning, church? Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Father. In the darkness, we were without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Cry! 
Please lift up a shout to him this morning. He's worthy of all of our praise. Come on. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Well, amen, amen. He's worthy of all of our praise, is he not, church? Come on. Come on, one more shout to him. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you guys can take a seat and take a look at the screens. Hey, Woodvale, thank you for worshiping with us today. I would like to give a shout out welcome to all of our first time guests that are with us. If you're joining for us for the first time on site or online, please take a moment to fill out a connect card on our website. We would love to have the opportunity to connect with you and get to know you and answer any questions you may have. If you are a first time guest and you are here on site with us, please drop by one of our guest tables in the lobby after service. We have a gift card waiting for you there and we'll be making a donation to Chio on your behalf just as a way to say thank you for being with us. Thank you Woodvale for being a generous church. Because of your faithful and ongoing giving, we have had the opportunity to be a blessing to our community in many different ways. If you came prepared to give today, there are several different ways for you to give at Woodvale. Head over to our website and click the give button to see six different ways that you can give at Woodvale. If you're on site with us today, there are debit machines in the lobby and offering buckets available to you as you leave the auditorium at the end of the service. If you're participating in Operation Christmas Child this year, you have two weeks left to fill your shoe boxes. All boxes are due back on Sunday, November 21st. You can also bring your filled boxes in throughout the week of November 15th. More details and drop-off times are listed on our website. I'd like to let you know about one of our amazing ministries, Marriage Mentoring. This ministry is designed for couples of all ages, stages, and serves as an incredible way for couples to be mentored by one of our trained marriage mentoring couples over the course of a year. Reports have indicated that couples who have walked through this marriage mentoring program have seen tremendous success down the road in their marriage. For more info, please visit our website or email info at woodvale.ca. And now, please stand as we take a moment of silence in honor of Remembrance Day, followed by the singing of our national anthem. Could we stand together? This is the Sunday before Remembrance Day, and we are grateful to live in the nation of Canada. God keep our land glorious and free. And we're reminded that there are people who have fought for our physical freedom. And this morning, we want to invite us, whether you're on site or online, just to pause Take a moment of silence, then I want to lead us in a word of prayer, and then we're going to sing our national anthem together. Father God, we thank you for our great nation of Canada. And God, I know that for many of us, war is such a foreign concept. Yet, God, I know that there are people in this auditorium and people watching online that maybe a grandfather, a great-grandfather, a great-uncle, a great-aunt, somebody has served in some capacity. We also know, God, there are people in our church family that are currently serving in our Canadian military. We are grateful for them. And I pray on this Sunday before Remembrance Day that we would pause, we would reflect, and we would remember the sacrifice that people have made, giving their lives for our physical freedom. And so we pause and we give you thanks and we honor those who have served and we honor those who are serving. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Can we give it up for those that are serving for Canada? We are so grateful for each and every one. People in our church family that are serving in the Canadian military, we honor you today. Could we take a moment and join in the singing of our national anthem?
Well, take a seat in God's presence. Good morning. It's really good to see each and every one of you here on site, and welcome to those who have joined us online. We are so glad that you've joined us for this 9 a.m. service. Did anybody enjoy that extra hour of sleep last night? Wasn't it kind of cool? And uh, we're just grateful for that. Well, we're beginning a brand new sermon series that we're calling Unshakable. Can everybody say that word, unshakable? One, two, three, unshakable. And we're going to explore over the next four Sundays an amazing book in the New Testament, Paul's second letter to the Thessalonian church, 2 Thessalonians. I shared with you last Sunday that I felt the Spirit of God just draw me to this great book. And I often, when I feel the Lord speaking to me, to go into my files and just see anything that I've shared in the past, just to give me a little bit of a reference. And I pulled out this really thin file. There was just one sermon in it. And, and I took another look this week. It actually went back like 30 years since I've taken a church family into the book of Second Thessalonians. But I felt the Lord just draw me to this great book. So we're going to take four Sundays to explore Second Thessalonians. So if you brought your Bible with you today, turn with me to Second Thessalonians. And I want to start by just reading to you verse 1 and verse 2. In verse 1 it says, Paul Silas and Timothy. Paul's the one who wrote this letter. And he wrote it to the church in Thessalonica, that's the capital of Macedonia. But Silas and Timothy were partners with him in the ministry. And so he wrote it, but Silas and Timothy were with him. To the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse number two, he gives a greeting that he often gave to churches grace and peace. I don't know about you, but I need God's grace. I need God's peace. And Paul said, grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians was only written several months before, but Paul felt he needed to write a second letter just a couple of months later. And the reason why is these new believers in Thessalonica were so confused in their Christian journey. Some of them even thought that they were living right then in the tribulation. Many of them were confused about the second coming of Jesus. Some of them were quitting their jobs and standing on a hill waiting for the return of Jesus. And they needed somebody to calm the chaos and clear up the confusion and give them God-given information. So Paul writes this letter just a few months after his first letter. I want to break this message into three parts. And first of all, I want to give you what Paul gave to the church in Thessalonica, three habits of a healthy church, or three marks of a mature believer in Jesus, because these believers were young in their faith, and they were growing, but Paul commends them. And these three habits of a healthy church, I really believe God wants them to be habits in our church called Woodvale. He wants them in my life and your life together. So let's get right to it. The first one is a faith that is growing. A faith that is growing. Paul said, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. In the ancient Greek language, that this was written in what's been translated growing more and more means rapid growth. It means quick growth. It means, it means exploding growth. It's like they were fast-tracked in their faith. And these new believers were growing really fast in their walk with Jesus. I want to make a statement this morning that at Woodvale, we don't want to be a decision-making church. We want to be a disciple-making church. We want people to make a decision for Jesus, but we don't want them to remain as infants in Jesus. We want them to grow in their faith journey. And I want to invite you, whether this is your first Sunday or you're watching online, checking us out, or maybe you've worshipped here for years, maybe you've been a follower of Jesus for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, keep growing in your faith because God's not finished with you yet. Come on, somebody, somebody say amen this morning. God's not finished with you yet. And so we've got growth tracks at Woodville. Maybe you're checking out Christianity. Sign up for Alpha. It happens on Wednesday night. You know someone who's got questions about Christianity. Bring them to Alpha on a Wednesday night. 
If you've just recently asked Jesus Christ into your life, sign up for our follow class and let us help you to to get grounded in your faith journey in our follow class. A great couple leads this and they want to pour into you and help you in your new faith journey. And then we want to see you get into a, a connect group. We've got over 70 connect groups across the city. Mixed ages, senior couples, young couples, young people, and the list goes on. And go on our website, do life together with a group of people. Or maybe you're struggling in your Christian journey. We've got life groups, and it will help you in your journey. And check out the many life groups that we offer. And you saw on the screen this morning about marriage mentoring. And just a word of advice, don't wait till your marriage is desperate to get mentored. Make a healthy marriage get stronger. Let a couple that's been down the road a little farther than you help you in your journey. Woodville's got so many tools in the spiritual toolbox to help you. And I really believe part of the growth in our journey is to be serving, finding your place of ministry. There's a serve class this coming Wednesday. Sign up for it. Let us help you find your place of serving. Pastor Matt shared this morning with our team of hospitality workers that there's 61 hospitality workers this morning serving to make our three Sunday morning services happen. I want, come on, I think we need to celebrate that. I think that's amazing. And there's people serving in many capacities. Part of your growth is to find what God wants you to do and serve in that capacity. Let us help you find it. I want to invite you, don't just come and sit in a pew on a Sunday morning. You are saved to serve. God wants you to grow in your journey. And a healthy church is exploding in their spiritual journey. A faith that is growing, number one. But then number two, write this in your notes, a love that is increasing. Paul said to the church in Thessalonica, and the love of all of you have for one another is increasing. And he uses a very specific word for love. There's many Greek words he could have chosen. Philios, which means a a brotherly kind of love. Eros, which speaks of an erotic kind of love. But no, no, he used an agape Greek word that means an unconditional love. For one another is increasing. And I love that Greek word that he uses for increasing. I want you, let me illustrate it. I want you to picture a river that is flowing. And rivers have banks. But the Greek word increasing doesn't speak of a river that is flowing in the banks. It speaks of a river that is overflowing over the banks. It was the early 1970s. I was raised in Cambridge, Ontario. And the Grand River flows right through the heart of the area, the city where I live. And the river overflowed. And the banks overflowed and the water went into the downtown core and flooded the city. I'll never forget that. And Paul uses a Greek word that means a love that is overflowing its banks, a love that knows no boundaries, a love that has no limits. And if we're honest, sometimes we go, yeah, 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 we need to love, but we put limits to our love. We put boundaries to our love. I will only go so far and only to this person, but not that person. I've got boundaries to my love. A healthy church has no limits to their love. How many people are glad we're family? Come on, anybody glad we're family? Anybody glad we're family? And we need to have a love that knows no limits. I will do anything, all that I can, to come alongside you and help you. And we together need to be a church like that. And then there's number three, a perseverance that is enduring. Number one, a faith that is growing. Two, a love that is increasing. And then a perseverance that's enduring. And Paul went around to the different churches bragging on the church of Thessalonica. Look at verse 4. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your your perseverance. You're you're sticking to your faith. You're you're holding on to your faith. You're, You're persevering through these difficult times. And the church in Thessalonica were going through some difficult times. And faith in all the persecutions, and the Greek word for persecution means stress. It means turmoil and trials you are enduring. And the Greek word for enduring means that you are you are holding up underneath the stress. I don't know if you know this, but today is the International Day of Prayer for the persecuted church in the world. 
Churches all across the world are pausing on this Sunday to pray for the persecuted church. And let me give you a few statistics. Persecution is so real. It's actually a daily reality for more than 340 million Christians worldwide. 340 million churches worldwide. The next stat I'm going to give you wrecked me when I read it. And and Open Door Ministry said that stat from from 2020 to 2021 went up by 80 million people. Did you get that? Last year, 340 million Christians worldwide have high-level persecution. I'm not talking. They go, oh, you're a Jesus freak. Oh, you go to that church. Oh, that's persecution. That's not persecution. People who have been martyred, killed for their faith. People who have been beaten for their faith. People who have been kidnapped for their faith. Churches that have been burnt down. People whose jobs have been taken because of their faith. That's persecution. 80 million more. Do you know what country in the world has the most highest level of persecution than any other countries. It's the same country that's received the most persecution for the last 20 years. It's always been on the top of the list. It's North Korea. The second country is Afghanistan, and then it goes to Somalia, Libya, and Pakistan, and then it goes to Yemen, Iran, Nigeria, India, and the list goes on. And I would imagine in a church of 85 nationalities that there's many of you, your country knows persecution. My Nigerian brothers and sisters tell me what goes on in their country. I've got others in this church who say in Turkey, Pastor, you need to know what goes on in in, in our country. Friends in our church from Malaysia say, Pastor, you need to know what goes on in our country. I think we need to pause, and I think we need to pray for the persecuted church. Can I invite you to stand one more time this morning? And in the middle of this brief message, can we pray for the persecuted church? And can I invite you just to lift your hands And let's together just call out to God, Father God, there are believers all around the world that are persecuted. Some have been martyred. Many have been beaten, tortured. Many family members have been taken from them. Churches have been burnt down. And and, and so much evil is going on. And God, I'm amazed that in the midst of that persecution, those churches are flourishing in their faith. Those churches are growing. God, I'm amazed that even in in China where persecution is huge, the church is exploding with growth. God, I'm learning from the book of Acts that the more the persecution, the more the church grew. But we pray that these believers would stand strong, that they would not grow weary in well-doing, that their perseverance would be enduring. And we lift up the arms of the persecuted church today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Nobody whispered. Everybody shouted amen. 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 Come on, give a clap offering of praise to our Lord God. Take a seat. Just before I segue, I'm grateful to live in the nation of Canada. But I want to invite you as a church to always keep your spiritual eyes open. To be careful that our country never goes on a slippery slope of moving away from the foundation of our Lord and Savior. Churches that have experienced persecution, it's not a light switch, it's a gradual change. May we never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may we always stand on the word and share the hope in Jesus' name. And so I want to invite us before we march on in this brief message, could we be a church where our faith is always growing? We've got people in our church who are in their 90s. We have a congregant who's over 100. We have babies born every week. And the church is exploding with, a, with growth. And God is doing amazing things. And some of you just gave your heart to Jesus last Sunday. And some of you are going to give your heart to Jesus today. And some of you have been saved for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Can we keep growing in our faith? Could our love keep going outside of the boundaries? And may we persevere and endure. 
I want to take you to number two very quickly. Two future focuses to help you handle whatever happens in the present. I, I was reading this, this great letter to the church in Thessalonica, and I saw a couple of focuses that I thought, wow, that's going to help me, and it's going to help the church. They said, let me quickly give them to you. Number one, the reward and the rest for believers. The reward and the rest for the believers. Let's focus on our eternal reward. Let's focus on our eternal rest. Let me read verse 5. All this is evidence. Paul is reflecting on the church where their faith is growing, their love is increasing, their perseverance is enduring. He said, this is evidence that God's judgment is right. Because you see, church, persecution doesn't bring you into salvation. But because of salvation, there's a revelation of our faith, of how we stand tall and we don't bend under suffering. But we, we, we allow our, our roots to be deep and we, we allow our faith to be strong that regardless, regardless, we're going to stand for Jesus. No matter what, we're not going to bail on God. No matter what, we're not going to walk away on our faith. I, I, I'm just being honest, church. I, we don't like wearing masks on Sunday morning morning, but I'm glad we can still gather on a Sunday morning, amen? I'm not going to let a mass stop us from coming to gather on a Sunday morning. Yeah, we can't pack the house out yet, and we got to do three mornings through, but so what? We're still going to show up. We're still going to come together because we need to be together, and early in this journey, we couldn't even sing, and it was tough, but so what? We're still going to show up, and we're still going to come together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I feel Holy Spirit prompting me about one of our missionaries, Eli Bansif. Eli is in, in Siberia, and he's spoken from this church before, and the persecution they've experienced where the government shut down their building, and they couldn't even go into worship, and it's minus like a billion degrees. It's Siberia, and it's the middle of winter, and the church family showed up outside on a cold winter Sundays to worship God. Come on, I want to be that kind of a church, no matter what. Verse 5, all this is evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you'll be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. You'll be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. Verse 7, and give relief to, to you who are troubled and to us as well. And the Greek word for relief speaks of, speaks of, a, of, of, of a string on a bow that is so stressed and it's so tight. And they release it. And the string is released and the tightness ends. Oh, we get to heaven, it's going to be over, amen. We get to heaven, it's going to be over. No more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, no more persecution, no more trials, no more tribulations. But in eternity with our Jesus, amen. Verse 10, on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people, to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. Paul is teaching the church in Thessalonica that there is a reward and there's a rest for the believers. And it's called heaven. This past week, one of our wonderful men in our church, Doug Coots, passed away. Oh, I can remember Doug coming in on Sunday mornings and he'd give me a big hug and, Pastor, good morning, and he'd squeeze the daylights out of me. But oh, he was so friendly. He took ill and went in the hospital. I was able to see him just before he passed. I left and he breathed his last breath and he stepped into eternity, but I know this, he's not a sick man today. He's well. He's in the presence of his Lord. Heaven, there's no sickness, no pain, no suffering. There's a service next Monday, not this Monday, next Monday, 11 o'clock, here in the auditorium to honor his life. You're welcome to come. 10.15 visitation, 11 o'clock service, not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow. Number two, this one really grips me, the retribution for unbelievers. You see, hell is not a popular topic. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Unbelievers go to hell, believers go to heaven. And Paul says in verse 6, God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. And then in verse 7, this will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed. Underline the word reveal. The Greek word is apocalypse. You ever heard that word? The apocalypse. And the apocalypse means the unveiling. It's like a curtain is pulled back and what is behind it is seen. 
And Paul says this will happen when the Lord Jesus, the apocalypse from heaven, he comes in blazing fire with his powerful angels. And anytime you read the words in reference to God blazing fire, it speaks of God's judgment. Powerful angels, power, it speaks of his judgment. He's coming back someday to judge. Verse 8, he will punish those who do not know God. The Greek word that's used here for no is not a surface word. It's an intimate word. It's an int- it doesn't mean religion. It means relationship. There's many who think they are a follower of Jesus, but they don't understand a personal relationship with God. There are many in our church that I was raised in a mainline denomination, but one day the light went on, and I realized that salvation is not a religion. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And Paul says, who do not know God? Watch this. Do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Underline the word obey because obey in the original Greek is it's the same word that's used to someone calling out or knocking persistently at a door. Oh, oh, you know where I'm going with this. Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And God is knocking on the hearts of mankind on planet earth. And the Greek word for obey means knocking on a door of someone's heart. He will punish those who don't know God. Do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Verse 9. And this verse grips me. And it ought to grip us today. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, he's knocking. But when he comes back, the door is shut. When he comes back, the invitation ends. Do you know Jesus? Many people say to me, oh, Mark, I wish I could have just 30 seconds in heaven. It would change my life. I don't pray that you get 30 seconds in heaven. This might shock you, but I pray that everybody on planet Earth gets 30 seconds in hell. Because if we really knew what it was like, it would change our heart to reach people for Jesus. These could very well be the last of the last of the last days. I don't know. I'm not a prophet. No man knows the hour of his return, not the angels. Not Jesus, but the Father in heaven knows. But we could very well be the generation that goes from earth to heaven. And I'll tell you, church, we, I'm on the bus, proverbially. I'm going to heaven. But we as a church need to do all we can to win this city, this nation, this world. For, is, there, is there a witness in the house today? we got to do all we can to win people. Come on, is there a witness in the house today? we got to do all we can to win people for Jesus because the knocking will stop. And the punishment of everlasting destruction will be forever. And unbelievers will be shut out from the presence of the Lord forever. That verse wrecks me. It gives me a new passion for my neighbors. It gives me a new passion for our city. And a new passion for the nation of Canada. We've got to do all we can to reach people for Jesus. Come on, somebody give a clap offering of praise to our God. I want to wrap up this message with three powerful prayers that Paul prayed for the church in Thessalonica. And I, I believe these are prayers for you and I. Number one, he, he, for your dedication. Paul was praying for the dedication of the hearts of the church, the believers in Thessalonica. Look at verse 11. With this in mind, with what mind? The reward, the rest, and the retribution. The heaven and the hell thing. With all this in mind, he said, we, Paul, Silas and Timothy, are always constantly praying for you that our God would make you worthy of his calling. I think what he's praying is that they would be sold out for their their faith. That they would be on fire for God. They're in the fire of persecution, but they would be on fire for God. I I pray that Woodville, we'd be so sold out for Jesus, that he would be our number one. He would be our everything, that everything we do would be to bring glory to Jesus, that he would never be second in our life, but Jesus would always be number one in our life, number one always in our life, more important than anyone or anything. He prayed for their dedication, but then number two, it moved to action. Number two, he prayed for, for their deeds, for your deeds. Look at the last part of verse 11 and that by his power everybody say power one two three power 
Not my power, his power. Not what I do, but what he does in me and through me. By his power, he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed that is prompted by faith. In other words, our faith is not locked to Sunday morning for an hour. It's faith with hands and feet and legs. And we're going out and we're doing something for the kingdom of God. We're tangibly doing something to let our city know and our nation know that we love them and God loves them. It's faith in action empowered by the Spirit of God. And then number three, for your demeanor. He said, we pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. You know how I word this? Here's one of my life ambitions, that we as a church and I as an individual would do all I can to make Jesus famous in the city of Ottawa and the nation of Canada. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's my prayer that who you meet this week would see something different about you because Jesus is in you and he's radiating through you and his love is flowing from you and your faith is exploding in growth and your love is limitless and your perseverance is enduring and you will do all you can to win people to Jesus. Come on, somebody give a little clap offering of praise to our God. Would you stand with me this morning? I just want to lead us in prayer. Pastor Brad and the worship team are going to lead us in the song of worship. And then we're going to celebrate communion together. So, Father God, I pray that these few words would call us to be unshakable. And I pray, God, what Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica would grip us today. And I pray, God, for me. I pray for everyone standing here. I pray for everyone that is watching online. I pray in the name of the Lord that our faith and our walk with you would be exploding with growth, that we would become more like you every single day. I pray that our love would have no boundaries and no limits. I pray, God, that our perseverance would be enduring. I pray, God, that our eyes would be fixed on you, that we'd know that heaven is our home. But, God, I pray that the fact that people who don't know you will be shut out from your presence for eternity would grip us, grip us, and it would give us a new care and compassion for our neighbors, for our city, for our nation, and for the world. And I pray, God, for everyone today that our faith would be unshakable. And I pray that we would stand strong for you and we would turn our eyes upon you. I pray it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Let's worship together. Let's worship together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes. Upon Jesus and look for in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the of his glory and grace.
everyone together, turn your eyes. Oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in his wonderful face. Just before we go any further, can I ask that every head would be bowed, everyone's eyes would be closed. Whether you're here on site or you're watching online, if today was the day that Jesus came back, or if today was the day that you stepped into eternity, there's no guarantee for the rest of the day. Do you know, beyond any shadow of doubt, that you're going to heaven? I say it so often, but I mean it. I don't want you to think you're going to heaven. I don't want you to hope you're going to heaven. I want you to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that you're ready for heaven. Young man, young woman, mom, dad, adult, single adult, grandma, grandpa, online, on site. If you can't answer yes to that question, we're pausing right now. Because I'd have no greater joy than leading you to Jesus. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm just going to count to three. And after I count to three, if you're standing here on site, and you're like, I, I'm not ready. But I want to be ready. I want to be led in a prayer to invite Jesus to be number one in my life, to be my Lord, my Savior. I, I want to come into a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm going to ask you just to lift your hand after I count to three. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. One, two, three. If that's you, you just lift your hand as high as you can. By lifting your hand, you're letting me know, Pastor, I want Jesus in my life. God bless you, friends. Hands are going up. God bless you. You can put them down. If you lifted your hand, I'm going to lead you in this prayer, and we're going to join you. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, let's pray that again. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I confess you today as my Savior and my Lord. I make my peace with you. I receive you in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your eyes. Somebody say amen. There's people who gave their heart to Jesus today. Amen. And if that's you, you made the best decision of your life. In just a couple of moments, when the service closes, on your way out, exit tables are there. we got a Bible for you. It's free, a booklet for you. It's free. Get into the follow class. Let us help you on this growth for Jesus. We got, I think, five people being baptized in second service. And, and, and if you've accepted Jesus, take the next step. Get baptized in water. And we just celebrate what God's done in your life. If you're watching online, reach out to us. We'll reach back to you. If you live somewhere across the nation of Canada or around the world, we're going to help you find a Bible-believing church in your neighborhood. We'll take the cup that you received. You got it ready? I want you to peel back the first layer. And I want you to pull out the little wafer. It, it represents the body of Jesus. How many people are glad Jesus went to a cross for you, for me? Amen. He paid a debt he didn't owe. And we owe a debt we can never pay. But Jesus took our place. Amen. Just hold it up in the air if you would. Father God, we thank you that you gave your life for us. May we never forget. And may this emblem of this wafer be a representation and a reminder that you paid it all by giving your life for us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake of the wafer.
You can just peel back the next layer. Pull it back maybe about a quarter of the way. It should be fine. The cup contains some grape juice. And it represents the blood of Jesus. Blood represents life. I'm glad my Jesus gave his life. Can we partake together of the cup of juice that represents the blood of Jesus? Amen. You can put that cup down. Here's what I want you to do. I want everyone to take a seat. Everyone take a seat. I can't wait for the day that we can actually open this altar and it's coming soon. But until then, we need to do things a little different. But you're seated here right now and you're walking through something and you need a miracle. You need Jesus to do a miracle in your life. Healing, maybe a financial miracle, maybe a relational miracle, maybe you're walking through dark valley. You, you just, I need Jesus to do something in my life today. I don't know what it is, but we're going to pray for you. And if that's you, I want you right now to stand to your feet because we're going to pray for you. You're walking through something. You need a miracle from God. Come on. As people start standing, others are going to join you. You're walking through something and you need a miracle. We're family, church, and we're going to pray for you today that Jesus will be your healer. Healer, Jesus would set you free. Jesus would bring breakthrough. Nothing is impossible with God. So I want you, if you see someone that's near you, just reach your hands towards them. Don't place your hand on them, but extend your hand towards them. Them. You're watching online, we're praying for you. And if you're standing, we're believing God for your miracle. So God, I pray you would be the miracle working God today. We pray healing in bodies in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would set people free from worry, anxiety. We pray miracle in marriages. We pray, we pray God that there would be breakthrough in finances. We pray in the name of the Lord that whatever the burden, whatever the need is, that this house would be a house of miracles. So God, we pray pray right now by faith that you would do something sovereign in the hearts of each one and we give you the glory we give you the honor in Jesus name nobody whispered everybody shouted amen amen come on everybody let's get on our feet together everybody stay standing but everybody let's stand together and pastor in our final moments I want to invite the church on site and online to lift their hands and lift their voice let's let's put all the focus on Jesus let's worship together turn your eyes to upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in His wonderful face. And the things of earth, they will go straight. Let's give a shout of praise to our God today. Amen. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. It's so exciting to see what God is doing. And we're seeing more and more and more and more and more people returning back on site. And it's exciting. And we give God the glory. I'm so glad you came today. Evelyn and I honestly love each and every one of you so much. We pray for you. We pray health in your body, peace on your mind, and overflowing joy in your spirit. And we love doing life with you. God is up to something big, amen. Can we just give a, a shout out to all of our first time guests? Come on, let's let all of our first time guests know we're so glad that you came. And if you're a first time guest, on your way out at an exit table, we got a coffee card for you. It's our way of saying thank you for joining us today. And uh, if you'd like personal prayer, it's always available. You can come and stand at the front. 
after people leave and someone on the prayer team will come and pray for you. Offering buckets in the back, debit machines in the lobby if you're here to give on site. And thank you, church, for your faithful giving. On our website shows you all the many other options of giving. May God give you a great day and an amazing week. Let's be unshakable for Jesus. Amen. God bless you, church. We love you.